Esther heard a word that she hasn't heard in a while the other day. Someone was talking about being expecting. She was pregnant and pretty close to getting ready to give birth. I'm expecting, expecting. What a good word that is, expecting. Because the rockets had been launched. And while she could not yet see or hear or smell or taste or touch the evolution of this that she was expecting, she was expecting it. She didn't need to see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it in order to expect it. To expect it. And that's what we want to talk to you about. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? Because what you're expecting is what you're thinking and what you're thinking is how you're feeling and how you're feeling is what you're getting. It's what you're getting. And so we're eager to talk to you about whatever it is that you want. What we just told you is really all that you'll ever need to know and actually all that we do know. <laughs> because you're here just exploring the infinite avenues of the way that plays out for you over and over and over again. Your life helps you to choose and you get to choose and what you choose is important. And the non-physical counterpart of you, which we've been calling your inner being, it's your Abraham. It's all of us. It's source energy is advocating constantly for what you have asked for. But if you're an advocator by your attention to it, if you are an advocator, meaning attractor of the opposite of what you want, then no one, even your inner being, not source, no one can interfere with your point of attraction and give you something different than what you are asking for. Talk about free will. Talk about fair play. Talk about everybody getting what they want. If you could just get everybody else out of your equation, if you could not worry so much about what they're doing or what they're thinking about what you're doing, or even more important, what you're thinking about what they're doing, if you could cease that huge level of resistance emitting, you would stop slowing the momentum of what you've asked for. And the timing of your thoughts turning to things would be so fast. And people would watch you and say, how are you doing that? Hey, hey, you're weird. You're weird. I barely hear you speak of something and it starts unfolding for you what's going on and you say well once I launch it I expect it once I launch it I expect it what do you mean well I expect it I ask for it and when I ask it is given to me I read the book when I ask it is given well how come when you ask it's given and when I ask it isn't given well maybe not yet but I ask and then I don't get in the way of it I ask and then I don't throw sand on the trail I don't really understand the laws of physics of this planet you tell your friend but I do know that there is a momentum that if I don't get in the way of it it increases and increases and increases and increases and increases until it becomes so powerful that whatever it is that I have focused comes into being and they said 10 minutes ago I told you we were weird and now I'm certain that you are <laughs> and you say I accept that I accept that I'm not like most people I'm not like most people because I ask I wasn't always like this you can tell them I was like most people I wanted things and when I didn't have them I was upset but that didn't work out for me it seemed like the more I felt needy or victim or poor or confused or lonely it just hung on and hung on and hung on it's like Groundhog Day over and over and over again I just kept living the same absence of what I wanted and then I got hold of a piece of clarity and I came to realize that how I feel is how I feel and I can't change it instantaneously but I can change it how I feel is how I feel and I started noticing that how I feel is what I'm getting I'm driving to work every day and when I'm ornery, it's a miserable drive. Nobody's nice to me. Nobody lets me in. People splash mud on my car. 
The lights are not on and off, red and green, in my favor. But when I'm feeling better, things just go better. And your friend, while she still thinks you're weird, knows what you're talking about because that friend, no matter who it is, also has good days and bad days, better days and not so good days. And when you start connecting the dots that how you feel is how you feel and that's okay. But how you feel is what you get when you connect those dots and then you say, okay, I'll play your silly game, Abraham. I'll work on adjusting how I feel, but I don't really get it because how do you look at something totally not wanted and feel good about it? We're not asking you to do that. We're just asking you to be a better selective sifter at what you give your attention to. Choose more of the things that do feel good. Well, that seems lazy. Well, focus isn't lazy. Focus is mastery. Focus is deliberate creation. But Abraham, it seems so selfish. You want me to just run around and just focus upon things that I like and that I want? I'm not asking you to do that. Life is a mixed bag. There's a lot of people you care about that aren't doing that and you care about them and so you're watching them mess up their own life and you feel like you should be there for them. But connect the dots. How much does your commiserating with someone who's in a bad place, how much has that ever helped them? Think about it. You started out in a conversation and you meant, well, here I come to save the day. And then you drag yourself off later, <laughs> realizing that you tried, but you got nowhere because it's not your work to do. It's your work to demonstrate through the clarity of your example that you're getting really good at connecting the dots and that you care about it. And people who are paying attention to you begin to notice that you're mostly in a pretty good mood. And if you're not, you don't come to the party. And if you come to the party in a good mood and then you aren't in a good mood, you leave the party. You selfish person, <laughs> self-interested. That's what we are asking. People say to us, Abraham, we think you teach selfishness. And we say, we do, for sure. Because you can't see other than through the perspective of self. And when the self that is your human self hooks up with the self that is your non-physical source energy, inner being self, there is a Synergy isn't the right word, but it's the best one Esther can find because she doesn't have any scientific vocabulary. There is a connection between this vibration of you and this vibration of your inner being that is huge in its attraction power. And that's what we call non-resistant state of being. That's what we call the art of allowing. That's what we call step three of the equation. Step one, you ask. Life causes you to do that. Step two is source answers. Your inner being focuses on what you've asked for and the law of attraction gathers the cooperative components to what your inner being is focused upon. And your inner being never looks back at why you're asking or where you are in relationship to what you want. Your inner being always stays focused in a non-resistant way on what you want. And when you do step three, which is the same thing, expecting good outcomes then you start getting them and when you stand as that example in the world where sure you have some bad days but you don't stay in them and you don't wallow in them and you don't try to explain them to everybody and you don't blame everybody else for them and you don't stand in regret and you don't criticize and you don't whimper and whine and you don't give up all of your power which is connecting to your inner being you don't calibrate to other humans and try to find the group that will complain the most with you and join that group because it feels somehow comforting to be with the other miserable ones. You don't do that anymore because how you feel is how you feel and how you feel is what you get. So somewhere along here, you start deciding, I think I'm going to join the happier group. And what you find out is quite a bit of the time, that group is just you and you. Just you and you. It's just you and you. But it won't stay like that. You let it be you and you feeling good, and before you know it, somebody else pops in. Hey! You go, oh, I didn't see you coming. Because 
It was a thought that turned to a thing and you didn't see it coming until you were ready to see it coming and there it is. And boy, did you feel it. Boy, did you feel the resonance of that? Then don't talk too much about this with anybody. Let it be your private work. Nobody's standing in the same place you are about anything. And when you need them to, it's really easy to get into that place where you start calibrating. You meet someone that felt so good. Bam! Universe, thank you, thank you, thank you. What'd you say? <laughs> you like what? I'm sorry, we can no longer be friends. <laughs> Even though there's so much about that person that is completely resonant with you, you want that person to be defiant of this absolute. Every particle of the universe contains wanted and unwanted. What you want and absence of it. Don't ask it to change. That's true laziness. Instead, be selfish enough to want to feel good and find a way to feel good, no matter what anybody else is doing. We've enjoyed this interaction <laughs> immensely. Have fun with the rest of your day. We are eager to talk with you about anything you want to talk about. Nothing is off limits. Let's go. It's a lot of trouble in this room. Start right here. We don't want to sound like we think the world is in trouble. It isn't. We don't want to make it sound like you all got to do some good work or things are not going to go well. They're going to go well. We just don't think that you should have to croak in order to feel better. We know you will for sure when you do, but we think that you should get to be in this body and connect with what you really know. And even though we can't find the words to guide you there explicitly, we can help you to be aware of what that feels like. And we know for sure that when you start resonating in that energy and you start feeling that way, that the evidence of that will begin to be your dominant experience. You said, I'm going to go into a physical body. And we said, we appreciate that so much. And we said, we're going to stay in non-physical. And you said, I appreciate that so much. And you said, I'm going to go mix it up with a lot of diversity. And we said, we're going to maintain what we know as the goodness that you're looking for ultimately. And you said, I'm going to go and I'm going to know what I don't want. And we said, that's really good because in knowing what you don't want, you are going to emanate exude offer a vibration that is precisely what you do want as you precisely live what you don't want and we're gonna hone in on that and then we all agreed on this important thing and then we said and the law of attraction is going to respond to the dominant vibration and we said and we are going to be the dominant vibration because we live in a realm where there is no resistance and you said but I'm going to a realm where there is resistance and we said yes because you're step one you are experiencing the resistance in order to choose but you have guidance to let you know that once you have chosen if you will turn your attention to what you have chosen it will start feeling really good and you said I think I have the best game in town and we said we think we have the best game in town and you said but I think I have the best game in town because I get to explore and I get to be the reason for the expansion and we said yes but you expand and we ride the rocket of your expansion and then we get to experience the ultimate culmination of what you have asked for for just moments before you do and you said yes but then I get to catch up with it and then we said yeah and when you catch up with it you get to feel like we feel and that's what that positive emotion is when you feel that love that's you returning to the wholeness to the wholeness of what to the wholeness that you caused to the wholeness that you created to wholeness that wouldn't exist if you hadn't been willing to come do you understand the perfection of our relationships eternally yeah. eternally we want to end with this one very important thing there is nothing serious going on <laughs> there is great love here for you and for now we are complete <laughs> I liked it a lot thank you guys thank you so much thank you so much if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next